A cough is a reflex response to airway irritation. An acute cough is one that has been present for less than three weeks, and chronic is above eight weeks. From three to eight is considered a subacute cough. The function of the cough is to expel any foreign substance from the airway and is a defense mechanism to protect the respiratory tract. All chronic coughs begin as an acute cough, but it's not possible to tell which will become chronic. Acute cough is most commonly caused by an upper respiratory tract infection due to a virus, such as the common cold, often featuring fever or malaise and will self-resolve mostly before three weeks. But it can also be caused by pneumonia or bronchitis, as well as other potential causes like asthma exacerbations, pneumothorax, or a pulmonary embolism. Subacute cough is commonly a post-infectious cough after a recent illness, and may often be the only symptom. Examples include bordetella pertussis, also known as whooping cough, or mycoplasma pneumoniae. You'll find free practice material on chronic cough and other videos available through Wisdolia, featuring multiple choice questions, flashcards, and case scenarios that give you feedback as you answer. Find a link below. Around 10% of the population have a chronic cough. The most common cause is upper airway cough syndrome, previously known as post-nasal drip. In this case, upper airway abnormalities are key, particularly throat clearing or an unpleasant sensation in the throat. There can be associated nasal or sinus disease, often with symptoms like congestion, discharge, or sneezing. The exact mechanism behind it, however, is not known. Another is use of ACE inhibitors. The most commonly accepted theory is that angiotensin converting enzyme normally breaks down bradykinin and substance P. However, when ACE is inhibited, these accumulate in the respiratory tract, generating a cough. It is estimated that 15% of people on an ACE inhibitor develop a cough. It is more frequent in females and those of Chinese ethnicity. Asthma can often cause a chronic cough, mostly worse at night or early morning, and may be associated with other symptoms like wheezing or shortness of breath. Commonly, there is also a family history of asthma or of A to B, featuring eczema or hay fever. Gastroesophageal reflux disease is another potential cause, as a result of reflux leading to microaspiration and therefore coughing, or due to irritation in the esophagus triggering the cough reflex, termed the esophagobronchial reflex. Smoking is a significant cause, typically causing a dry cough that is worse in the morning. Smoking is also the main cause of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, a common feature of which is a chronic cough. Heart failure can present with cough, classically with white sputum and worse at night. And chronic cough can also be psychological in nature, with somatic cough syndrome and tick cough being examples. Other causes include occupational exposure, cough hypersensitivity syndrome, which is an umbrella term used to describe excessive stimulation of the cough reflex by mechanical, thermal, or chemical irritants. Other causes include lung fibrosis, cancer, obstructive sleep apnea, and thoracic aneurysms. There can be red flag symptoms that may be present alongside the cough, including hemoptysis, meaning coughing up blood, which could be a manifestation of cancer, or a pulmonary embolism, voice alteration, which can indicate a laryngeal lesion, or disturbance of the laryngeal nerve. Dysphagia, meaning difficulty swallowing, is potentially a symptom of esophageal cancer or lung cancer, and another is peripheral edema with weight gain, suggesting fluid overload and possibly heart or liver failure or nephrotic syndrome. Other red flags include dyspnea, especially if acute, at rest or at night, and asbestos exposure, as well as a chronic cough in smokers aged over 45 years with a new cough or a change in their cough, 
and smokers aged 55 to 80 who have a 30-pack year smoking history or those with a similar history that have quit in the last 15 years. Systemic symptoms such as fever or weight loss are also red flags. These would all warrant further urgent investigations. Generally, subacute cough will resolve within eight weeks, but cough beyond that should be investigated. Often, a multi-step treatment will be needed, based on the most likely cause of the cough, established from the history, examination, and possibly investigations, like blood tests including full blood count, chest x-ray, and spirometry. As we've seen, a chronic cough can have many causes, some of which may overlap, which is why it's recommended to highlight contributing traits when describing a patient with a chronic cough. For example, a chronic cough with features of reflux and ACE inhibitor use. Management is then guided based on the treatable traits identified. For upper airway cough syndrome, this generally involves use of an antihistamine like chlorphenamine and a nasal decongestant. Note that the decongestant should only be used short term as it can lead to rebound congestion. Intranasal steroids like mimetazone are another option. There's usually an improvement within two weeks, but treatment may be required for up to several months. If the cough is thought to be due to an ACE inhibitor, the cough will generally resolve in most people in around one month. The benefit of the ACE inhibitor needs to be balanced with the associated discomfort from the cough. The ACE inhibitor could be swapped to an angiotensin receptor blocker, which is less likely to produce a cough, possibly due to bradykinin levels not being increased, or could be stopped entirely. Asthma symptoms will typically improve following introduction of maintenance therapy, which usually begins with a trial of inhaled corticosteroids. If asthma or COPD is already established, but is poorly controlled, then escalation along their respective inhaler pathways, for example long-acting beta-2 agonists or montelukast in asthma, should be considered, alongside review of inhaler technique and particularly in COPD, smoking cessation and pulmonary rehab. If there are also heartburn or reflux symptoms, then a trial of proton pump inhibitors such as omeprazole or lansoprazole is indicated and smoking cessation is generally recommended, although it can initially worsen a cough, thought to occur due to dysfunctional cilia regaining function and clearing more foreign particles, but also due to nicotine suppressing the cough reflex. Therefore, a withdrawal from it can potentially enhance cough hypersensitivity. Continuous positive airway pressure may be helpful if the cause is obstructive sleep apnea.